Hello, this is Pastor Roland. My plan was to read one of my favorite Bible verses, but I can't seem to read it without making a mistake. So instead, I'll talk about something else. I want to talk about a little emotion that's the most wonderful emotion you could ever experience. And uh, I hope that you do. And the reason that I'm here is to try to help you to uh, experience that emotion. Do you know what it is? I won't use the Bible term right now. I'll say it a little different way. It's being sorry. Being sorry is one of the most beautiful, beautiful emotions. When it is before your Creator, because it means that your Creator is touching you, and it means that you are responding, and now there's a connection between you and your Creator. Let's suppose that there was a, crea a connection established between you and God. Okay? you would immediately, would you not, sense his greatness and your nothingness, his goodness and your rottenness, okay? That's why a lot of people, they just want to run and dig a hole in the ground and hide, okay? Now, before Christ came, there were few people, you know, Moses, David, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Amos, the prophets. Um, undoubtedly Ruth, okay, Elijah, Enoch. There were people who uh, experienced God firsthand. Okay, and then they walked with God. But since Christ but for the vast majority of people, either they were complete heathens, worshiping false gods, or so caught up in their other things that they were doing, that, and so far from him, and so utterly degenerate and corrupt. See, that were, God, were, were he to ever draw nigh, they, they could not bear. See, they could not bear to see the truth about themselves in his light. Well, since Christ came, it's all different now. And you actually can experience the gentle touch of God. It's the most wonderful thing. You stop to think about it. And what it is, is when you, your conscience, which you now undoubtedly know as anxiety, perhaps, is some kind of anxiety. Okay, it's your conscience. Or uh, you may not even sense it at all. When you were a little child, you did. When you did something wrong, when you were a little child, when you, for example, when you got angry at your mommy and said, I hate you, and you stormed in your room, you felt bad. In your heart, you felt bad because you knew you didn't really, shouldn't have said that to your mom. You see? Well, the years went by, and couple of things happened. First of all, you became resentful toward people. Hateful. Resentful. Okay? And um, the other thing is you got all caught up in the world. Okay? And um, so you fell far away from your conscience. And you resented a lot of people. Maybe your mom, your dad, your brother, other people. You hated them. You were jealous of them. See, you look down on them, you envy them, whatever. It's all little bits of hate involved, resentment. And so that totally separated you from God. And then, of course, being full of resentment, that makes you the antithesis of anything good. See, you can't love and hate at the same time. So everything you did was to, was to hide from conscience. 
See, because conscience would immediately make you aware. You may have moments now when you've done something rotten. You were impatient with your child or you cheated on your wife or you resented your husband or you, you talked behind someone's back, said something about them that wasn't true. Okay? Or you reneged on duty. You know, you should have been there for your little child. You should have been there for your child. But instead, you know, making money and talking on the cell phone with your friends or whatever was more important. So you, you abandoned your child to daycare, preschool, the terrible school system. And something happened to your child. Okay? Or if nothing happened, then your child was hurt, changed no longer the same child anymore because of the influences there. And the years went by, you could have been with your child, you could have enjoyed those golden moments, but you missed out on them all because other things were too important, because you were selfish. Okay, you were selfish. So now you look at, have to see your selfishness is very painful. Okay, it's painful. As a man, maybe you uh, took advantage of the lady, took advantage of her. Maybe you brought disease home. You brought herpes or something home. Or you cheated on your wife you, or did other naughty things. And you're, you're, she knew, somehow she knew, and your kids knew. And you hurt them because they looked to you in the eyes of a child, Father stands in for God. You betrayed them. See, you destroyed what maybe what little faith they had, the possibility of faith. See, so all these things, these are all painful to be seen, but they must be seen. But now, what conscience is, is still there, knocking. It, it follows you. See, you run from it. So you ran from it. You, could, you didn't want to see those things. You didn't want to see that you were a liar, a cheat, a phony. You didn't never wanted to admit that. So you ran, ran, ran from your conscience. Maybe you even took drugs, smoked marijuana, drank alcohol, took pills to get away from your conscience. But finally, one day, one day, um, there's your conscience again, trying to rub your nose, showing you that what you did was wrong. And this time, instead of running, instead of reaching for your marijuana, instead of reaching for the cell phone, the iPhone, this time, you just sit quietly and bear the pain, seeing the truth. Okay? And it's painful. And then, perhaps you begin to sob because you're sorry about what you see about yourself. In the God's light of truth, see, God's light of truth is there showing you your error, okay? And God's light of truth is so good that you see your rottenness in the light of its goodness. You see what I mean? So, um, that's the big, that is repentance. That is being sorry in your heart. Now, the other thing that happens is people have been mean. Maybe when you were a child, you did something wrong, and then they forced you to say you were sorry. Or they were mean, and they nagged you, or they uh, hit you, or they, they made it very painful. They accused you, and punished you, and it made you angry and hateful and resentful. And you didn't want to be sorry anymore. See? And now you have to see that maybe people were mean or harsh or what have you. But now you have to see that that not being sorry, that hardening your heart, it's not a good thing when it comes to your Creator. So now you see that there is a light from God. In the meditation that I teach, you close your eyes and you look at the inside of your eyelids. Close your eyes and look at the inside of your eyelids and you're going to see light there, little pattern, patterns of light, delicate glow little pixels of light. That is actually the light from God. Okay? Now that light from God, when you sit still, it makes you aware then of your own 
you're all wrong. And if you sit still and bear the pain of it, then it refines into sadness, sorrow over what you see about yourself. And it's a helpless sorrow, helpless sadness. You see that you're wrong. You see that you can't change yourself. And you just are sorry just about what you see about yourself, okay? And then that refines into relief, okay? And then joy returns. The blue sky comes back, the white puffy clouds, the birds sing. And you realize that God doesn't hate you. See, he's always known what, what you did that was wrong. He's always known. But he was just waiting for you to be sorry. It's like the son story of the prodigal son. You know, go to the Bible and read the story of the prodigal son who went off and squandered his inheritance. And, and finally, he came back to his father's house. And the closer he got to the door, the more he wanted to turn around and run the other way. Okay? Finally, he knocks on the door and his father answers. He says, Father, I did a lot of bad things, Father. I betrayed you. I'm sorry. I'm not worthy to be your son. And his father said, I'm glad you're back. I knew what you were doing, but I was just waiting for you to come back and be sorry. Come, let's have a feast. For I had lost a son, and now I have regained my son. Okay? That's what repentance is. So now you see how you have to, what being sorry really means. It's a beautiful thing when you were a little child, you knew it. See, but now realize that those people who were unnecessarily harsh or who teased you or who betrayed you, remember now, they, had, they have feet of clay. Someone betrayed them. Someone was cruel to them. See, someone corrupted them. They're just doing to you what was done to them. Okay? So don't hate them. Okay, that's the other thing. Don't hate them. They too are lost sheep. Your your mom, your poor old unloved mom, okay, and your dad, the world was too much for him. So don't hate him anymore, okay? Just see that he made some mistakes, but don't hate him. Okay? And so now you see um, how beautiful it is. Now, I do have the meditation, the new meditation that I have, the easy meditation, or the prayer meditation. They're both basically the same. They're really the same meditation. They just have a different name. They're so simple. Uh, they help you to become still. Sit still before God's light. Okay? Um, and uh, you just have to give it a try. Maybe if you're ready to be sorry. Maybe you've been ready for it. See, a lot of people, they wanted to be sorry for a long time. But they didn't know how. Who are you going to be sorry to? You can't go tell other people. They'll just, you know, use what you tell them against you, hold it against you. or And even if they did, you know, say, well, you know, you, I felt sorry for you or whatever, what good would that do? It wouldn't do any good. What you need is to get, come back to God like the prodigal son. Okay? My meditation is just a little technique that will help you with that. Okay? My name is Pastor William.